The program director for Arian Space is Veronique Loisel. The These program are director the for Arian Space teams. Is you can see on the top right hand side of your screen that the clock has now restarted and we are 10 minutes and 40 seconds to launch. Various key people we're looking at. This is the range operations manager today. Top début de la séquence finale lanceur. And he's just announced the beginning of the synchronized sequence, the final phase of the synchronized sequence there. And what that means is the computers are now running all the final checks. They run a very impressive list of operations. And the teams watching over those are close by at the launch control centre. And here we're looking at the Soyuz launcher on the pad. The skies have cleared a bit. It's actually looking quite nice out there. It's going to be hot. Now here we have the launch zone we can see from a distance with our drone flying over a number of different facilities. This is the hangar where we store the containers which I... have the parts of the Soyuz in them. And then to the left of that, you can just see this is the launch control can hear me now? It's where the teams are right now monitoring the countdown. This is the okay. building called the MIG. It's the assembly building. The vehicle is actually <sighs> assembled from those parts in the containers horizontally. The upper stage is fueled here in the FQ building just close by. And you can see the rail attaching... All right, so I'm going to turn her down and we're going to do our bingo mid. thing. Once the uh, has been... Assembled. Or the the launch bingo stages, link, if you don't already have it, will be posted with real quickly. But you should already have Soyuz, forget, O3B and, there, O3B and medium Earth orbit and the checked off on your part, bingo card. Which is inside here. Also, the Arian space. Stage with the satellites attached are all mounted on top. And that's... And look at that. Uh, launcher there. That's oxygen leaking out, tall. so you can cross off liquid oxygen. And we're going to see what the teams have been doing in the launch campaign. Hello, I'm Davy Franken and I'm the mission director for the VS-22 launch campaign. I'm responsible for the overall organization of the satellite campaign, the interfacing with the launch vehicle and the final chronology. We are now in the final phase of this 22nd Soyuz launch campaign from Kourou for the fifth batch of O3B satellites. The satellite campaign started on the 2nd of February when the four satellites arrived at the Felix Ebué airport in an Ilyushin aircraft. The satellites and allied equipment were transported to the S5C facilities the same day. In the S5C, the satellites were unpacked one by one and were installed in the clean room, after which they were subjected to an extensive electrical checkout. Also, the propulsion system was carefully verified before starting the fueling preparations. On the 19th of February, the first satellite was transferred to the S5B fueling hall. After finalization of the fueling preparations, the satellite was filled with hydrazine, then pressurized and finally integrated on a dedicated dispenser. The next three satellites followed the same process in the following weeks. The stack with the four satellites was finalized on the 14th of March. For this VS-22 launch campaign, I'm the co-launch site head of operations. I lead the launch campaign operational team working on the ground to make both the launcher and the ground installations ready for launch. The Soyuz VS-22 launcher campaign started on February 6th with the arrival of the Fregat upper stage in the MiG building. During the first three weeks of the launch campaign, Fregat underwent various electrical and pneumatic checks. After those three weeks, Fregat was transferred to the F-Cube filling building. This is on the Soyuz launch complex. In parallel, the assembly operations of the tree stage were carried out at the MiG building. Soyuz is assembled horizontally. First, we put together the two parts of the central body. 
Then, we assembled around the central body the four boosters. These give Soyuz its characteristic highly aerodynamic silhouette. Finally, we assembled the third stage on the central core, easily spotted thanks to the lattice. After assembly, the tri-stage underwent various electrical and pneumatic functions tests. But back to Frigate. After filling operations in the F cube building, Frigate was transferred to the S3B building, 12 kilometers from the Soyuz launch pad. After a standby phase of one week, the stack was transported to the S3B building in a CCU3 container. On the 26th of March, the dispenser with the four satellites was integrated onto the Frigate. The day after, the clients performed their internal dress rehearsal and the final functional verifications before the encapsulation. The fairing was integrated on the 28th of March, which completed the upper composites. D-3 is the first of the four days of the countdown phase, where the tri-stage and the upper composite are transferred to the launch pad. Early in the morning, the tri-stage is rolled out to the launch zone, then put in vertical position thanks to the erector rail car. In the afternoon, the upper composite reaches the Soyuz launch zone after a trip of around an hour and a half from the S3B. In early evening, the upper composite is hoisted into the mobile gantry, 27 meters high, to be assembled on the tri-stage. With the Soyuz launcher completely integrated, the different teams performed the general dress rehearsal. The launch readiness review has been held yesterday and a green light has been given to start the final chronology. We are go for launch. And the tri-stage, it's often called, or the three-stage, actually means those first three parts, so the boosters, the first stage and the second stage, taking us all the way up to the fairing up there at the top. That's the part that gets us away from our planet. Looking here at the Jupiter Mission Control Center, and here are the teams inside the control center. The computers are managing the operations right now at this point in the countdown, and as we saw, the teams there in the launch control center are operating now and monitoring, watching over all of these operations. So while the mission control center takes charge of the whole mission, the men and women here in the launch control center are dealing with everything to do with the launch and the flight. So the launch pad, and the launch vehicle, various different teams in here responsible for ground operations. Also the flight readiness of our launch vehicle. Of course, we have both Russian and European teams working side by side here. Because Soyuz is, of course, a Russian launcher. In Baikonur, in Kazakhstan, the launch control center is in several bunkers underground. And here, as we saw, it's uh, just next to the pad. We do have about a two-meter concrete roof on top of the launch control center. Just at the bottom of the top of the vehicle is, you can see there, the, you can see the mast. Can you see it just attaching to the top, that big grey mast? Now, he's just announced that the umbilical lines, which are inside that mast, have now been detached. They fall into a little basket inside the mast. Those lines are the feed lines, taking the services, the electrical services, the air conditioning, etc., to the upper parts of the launcher. And then there's another mast below it, which uh, contains the feed lines to the lower parts, and both of those will be retracting just before launch. Now, everybody is going outside to watch the launch from the two terraces so they can see it with their own eyes and feel the power of the beast as it flies over. Now, a quick word about the ignition sequence. We switch the engines on 16 seconds before launch. That gives us time to throttle up slowly to make sure they're working properly. À tous de TDO, attention pour moins une minute.
stop at zero one one minute. We are one minute to launch and we are orbiting the next four satellites in the O3B constellation, which Thalassolania Space built for SES networks. And we are flying on board the 22nd Soyuz to launch from the Guiana Space Centre. We're 40 seconds to launch. Soyuz switching to onboard power. Let's watch. La À tous de DDO, attention pour les débuts de la séquence d'allumage du lanceur. Top, à jour au moins 20 secondes. La gage du main VKM, allumage triétage. À tous de DDO, attention pour les décomptes finales. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Top, décollage UVS 22. Was that the cross, or is that just the boosters flaring? They're doing an excellent job with tracking. The boosters are still on. La propulsion est nominale. Nominal. We are off. The, the next four satellites in the O3B constellation have started their journey. Our cameras following the launcher there as she lifted off. From the pad here, in the Amazon rainforest. He's telling us that everything is going according to plan. Nominal. Or, you know, nominal, if you speak English. Oh, they're doing Those such a four boosters are doing all the work right now. They're hauling us away from the gravity of our planet. They burn for a couple of minutes but that's enough to get us away from the pull of Earth. La propulsion est nominal. And their propulsion is normal. Nominal means normal. Bottom left-hand side of the screen, 37 kilometers above the Earth right now and climbing. This is the scheduled moment for the boosters to be jettisoned. And that's what it looks like up there. Cameras on a previous <gasps> launch. See how Whoa. they twist and turn. That's all planned. Separation des boosters. And that's been confirmed. We have separated Whoa. our boosters. And I can hear the sound of the Soyuz here now over the mission control center, which is about 20 kilometers from the pad. It takes a while for the sound to get to us. Trajectory on the top right hand side, the planned trajectory is the yellow curve and the cross is cool. the actual position of the launch vehicle. You can see that we're climbing. Our distance in the middle of the bottom of the screen is the distance from the pad if you were to draw a straight line from the pad to the position where the launcher is. And then our speed it's on the bottom the right. Speed on the bottom right is our speed per second, kilometers per second. We're traveling at 2.19 kilometers per second. As we turn around, we're getting a good shot here of the fairing. You missed it, Puck. You missed That's this the off. top of the launch vehicle. Cheerios. And inside Make it rain. are our satellites. It's protecting us from the rigors of the launch, various things, the sound at liftoff, the acoustic vibrations at liftoff. Don't think you need me to tell you how loud that is. The lanceur is stable. He's telling us the launch vehicle is stable. And also, of course, friction, because if you look at the bottom right-hand side of the, left-hand side of the screen, 
uh, we are now 120 kilometres above Earth. Until now, we've been flying through the dense that counts part as of the booster atmosphere. Separation. But we no longer have friction because we are in space. So we can jettison our fairing. De la coiffe. And that's now been confirmed. We have jettisoned the fairing. And we can see our satellites for the first time. The four O3B satellites at the front attached to their special dispenser. And in the middle, can Thanks you see a gap following. between Here's the some third stage and the second Make stage? Make it rain! Well, that's there on purpose with the lattice area. That's fairing. because Soyuz uses separation. what's called a hot stage technique. It switches, it switches on the engine of First the stage. third stage while the second stage is still burning, and that allows the All right, so that's evacuation. the first stage separation. Um, I thought I had so, fairing separation. Separation block A. And we have confirmation there that we've now separated the La second stage, section the block A, and we have jettisoned the rear section. So we are now burning the third stage and our flight path, you can see it there. We're traveling along the equator. So we've lifted off from the pad. The Galio is the tracking station here at the Guiana Space Center. And the next one to pick us up will be the Natal tracking station. These computer-generated images are a simulation of what the experts have planned. And it's what they've calculated is happening to the launcher and the satellites. La propulsion block e est nominal. The propulsion's nominal, normal. So basically what they do is they, they take all the information, all the data and all the schedule of, of events that is based on extremely accurate <laughs> predictions uh, dedicated i didn't get a chance to read it if he puts it up again i shall dedicated the sky translate it to my for two you. uh girls they put all of the that said. into the computer which then generates these images for us and allows us to visualize what's happening up there in space it's cute the sign is adorable because of course what happens in space is uh, Something we can't actually did not see announce with our own what Max cameras. Q was. Uh, Seal could probably, and I'm probably mispronouncing it, but I think it can be uh, translated. We lifted off from heavens. the pad six minutes and 52 seconds ago. It was a spectacular launch. So I'll give you guys an easy Four one. O3B satellites lifted off in style. Hey, puck, speak. Come on, speak. In their first speak. class compartment on. with their yeah, seat belts oh. on, on board the 22nd launch speak. Soyuz ah. launch vehicle. There we go. And he spoke. From this Make it rain. Here, All right. Pad at the Guiana Space Center. There's a good word for bingo planned. I am totally writing down good words for the future. We have now entered into the tracking zone of the Natal ground station. The range operations manager has just confirmed that Natal have picked us up, so you can see it there. It's on the northeastern coast of Brazil. Brazil. The tracking stations often known as downrange stations. Hey, that was downrange. The range is the space port, but also all the other associated nope, they buildings said downrange. across the planet, which pick up the signal as we fly over. This allows us to track what the launch is doing in real time, but also to check afterwards, make an evaluation. And Soyuz, for Soyuz, the flight data from the rocket does go via Moscow first to be validated. Sometimes it can take a little time for us to get confirmations. But we're seeing key moments happening at the scheduled time. Telemetry is also known as telematics. Telemetry, of course, being the 
the name for the process of sending the signal to the tracking stations. We use telemetry. And it's a, a technology which allows measurements to be taken from far away. It actually comes from the Greek, tele, which means remote, like television or telemedicine, medicine from a distance, and metron meaning measure, so measurement from a distance. It's used in a lot of industries, oil and gas, for example, medicine, healthcare, mining. So this is the scheduled separation now of the third stage, and that's what it looks like up there. Oh, wow. Separation frigate. And we have that confirmed by the range operations manager. We've separated the third stage, and we are getting close now to the next phase of the journey, where the upper stage will take the wheel. It's preparing preparing to switch its engine on this is called the pre-burn phase giving a quick burst of acceleration you can't really see it but it's pushing the fluids back into the tanks and that's to make sure that there is enough propellant to ignite the engine properly so this one forget uses it's a bit like when you press the accelerator in the car and you suddenly speed up and you get pushed back against the seat. Frigate uses these two molecules. Um, this is the scheduled time then for Frigate to switch its engine on for the first burn. Its job being to deliver our satellites to their drop-off point in space. And so we're going to find out more now about our four satellites. Oh, great. I'm Véronique Roisel, <laughs> and I'm the program director at Iron Space. For this program, my work mainly consists in interfacing with our customer, SES, for all subjects linked Bye, to YYZ. matters, but also contractual, communication, financial insurance, and legal aspects. Our job is to respond at best at our customers' requests. This launch comes after the four first Soyuz so, STB launches dedicated to the deployment. Turn her down a little bit. So, as Noel was saying, nice knowing you, CosmoQuest, you have hydrazine um, in your hands. So, the frigate uses hydrazine. Hey! Oh. Go! Out! 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 I know you have strong feelings on hydrazine being used as rocket fuel, but I need you to voice your opinions outside. Are you good? And high capacity for data solution management. They don't like hydrazine being used because hydrazine's high. Hydrazine is actually uh, not good. So I'm not sure which part is actually hydrazine, but they use in frigate N204, which is what this would look like. Um, I'm trying to put it right in front of my face so you guys can. And um, it also uses something called UDMH, which I forget exactly what it stands for, but it has two nitrogens and a couple carbons. So tetra... Nitrogen tetraoxide. Um, oh, yeah. So it's like, I know there was a like more formal name, but I just remember seeing it everywhere as N204. So that's what that would look like. Um, it is actually double bonds from here to the um, nitrogen, from the oxygen to nitrogen, but it's this weird thing that happens in chemistry where the charge is spread between like three atoms. So that's why I have, I'll put it a little closer to the camera. So that's why I have like two half pi bonds going here to just kind of try to show um, the resonance of what's going on. Um, because hydrogen really only likes to have three bonds. So yeah, um, like if we look at this nitrogen atom, here's one bond, here's two bonds, here's three bonds for it to have you know, the pi bonds or the double bonds, um, it would be, 
it would be like five bonds. So there's some resonance which spreads out the charge. So, Indeed. yeah. And... But it uses both of these things in Forget, which probably makes uh, the hydrazine, which I didn't, I don't have a molecule of. Towards the west coast of Africa. Yes, yes, teams here, smiling. And uh, Ascension Island used to be a stopover during the early days of commercial airlines. Indeed, NASA had a communications dish there. That was during the space race in the mid-1900s. I think that it was used to track the Apollos. So it's uh, been played an important role over the years. So, um, the frigate upper stage was scheduled to switch its engine off and uh, once an engine is switched off, the next phase of a flight starts. It's called the ballistic phase. Ballistic means travelling without propulsion. So, a spacecraft or a launcher has to be travelling high enough and fast enough to cruise without the engine and that saves on propellant and helps to optimize the conditions of the flight. O3B switched on services in September 2014 and since then the constellation has grown from strength to strength. Alright, so I'm going to turn this down in a second. In 2009, SES's investment um, in the O3B medium earth. So we've talked about O3B before, and um, O3B's mission is essentially to bring. Uh, what am I trying to say? Essentially, to bring internet to the other three billion people. So they're mostly focusing on Africa. So let's talk about hydrazine and the other thing real quick. Let me pull chat up. So, um, so here are those two molecules again, right? So I'm not sure what happens. I wouldn't be surprised if this is used as the oxidizer. But what happens is that it's probably... Well, it's easier to demonstrate on this one, but... Hydrogen and something else, something has to happen. There's some kind of chemical reaction, which, what is happening? Sorry about that. Uh, there's some kind of chemical reaction. And anyways, the, the easiest way to show it was to pop off that one off of the UDMH and pop it onto here, and this is all hydrazine is. It's just N2H4. The blue, again, is nitrogen, and the white is the hydrogen. And Wikipedia says it's highly toxic and dangerously unstable unless handled in solution as... Um, it says NH2, NH2... So I guess these in water, so yeah, I guess separate of these in a thing of water. Um, I might have enough, I might actually have enough uh, carbons to make dodecane. And, but yeah, so they're saying if it's these two dissolved in this, this is just a molecule of water, and I don't have a gazillion of these to show you it being dissolved. It's saying it's stable when it's in this. And you would get water from the uh, from the hydrogens on this carbon molecule. Uh, oxygen molecules can actually pull them off. It's kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, you put these two together and this is bad things happening. So, I mean, Wikipedia says it's fueled with with this. 
And let me put this back on this. So, I'm not sure. Uh, ben Cyan Games is asking where I got my molecule set from. I actually have the box handy this time. Uh, this set has been, I had to have it for organic chemistry and it's been added to over the years. Um, it is called Molecular Visions. Uh, you can go search for Darling Models or Molecular Visions. And he does ship worldwide. And his kits to some areas actually do include shipping. So if you're ordering a single kit in the US, shipping is included. So, uh, I don't think anybody's called Bingo yet. And today's 403B satellites will mean that Ariane Space will have launched 61 satellites for their friends at SES. So we've had several confirmations. The range operations manager confirmed we had indeed switched off our engine on the frigate upper stage. See. And we also picked up the signal at the tracking station in Libreville, which is in Gabon on the west coast of Africa. Digging. Western Central Africa, in fact, apparently in the port, uh, port city on the Como River, which is near the Gulf of Guinea. And I believe that the tracking station has been there since 1994. Apparently the German space agency <laughs> set up there. No seco, no so, rotation. the O3B most, satellites most no are clever Yeah, technology. it doesn't look like it's rotating. All right. In an empowered world, you are free. Free to bring loved ones along on distant voyages. Observe. Protect. And enable rapid response with life-saving communication. Don't mind me, I'm digging through my set. Streamline operations in real time, no matter the location. Bring cloud services and content to new, uncharted markets. With global coverage and low latency performance, you're free to follow opportunities anywhere. O3B Empower. Engineering Freedom. Début des manœuvres de rotation avant le deuxième allumage frigate. Seven. So the range operations manager is telling us that everything's going normally. Uh, we have now started the next uh, manoeuvre. Frigate is getting ready to switch Oof. its engine back on again. So this is pre-burn number two. And... It will be giving another burst of acceleration. It uses small thrusters from the attitude control system to push those fluids back into the tanks. So it means that the feed lines are full of fluid. It's very essential if the engine is to ignite properly. And you can see there the Four satellites attached, lovingly built by the men and women at Talisalania Space, who are experts at this kind of thing. Trajectory, top right-hand side. We climbed steeply into space and plateaued out a bit. We're getting ready to start climbing again, and this is the scheduled moment for us to switch our engine on in order to help us to... Pick up speed now. Everything's functioning normally. So this is the second burn. And we've been hearing about the satellites being in MEO. That's medium Earth orbit. But for anybody who's not very familiar with the different types of orbit, I thought we might have a little chat about them. <laughs> so there's three primary types of orbit and there's others as well, but these are the main ones. There's low Earth orbit, medium Earth orbit, and geostationary orbit. So low Earth orbit is closest to the planet. It's up to about 2,000 kilometers approximately. 
And often weather satellites or Earth observation satellites are in this orbit. And the International Space Station as well, which is why they get such great images of our planet. There's the Telesselenia space team here, Rémi Lotuc. They've done some great work building these satellites, which are highly sophisticated. And Robert Carpentier from Telesselenia Space. So at the opposite extreme is geostationary orbits, and these uh, guys and girls at Telesselenia Space are experts in building all these kinds of satellites for all these different kinds of orbits. And geostationary orbit is 36 thousand kilometers above the Earth. Most of the telecoms satellites are in this orbit. It's one-tenth of the way to the moon, so it's a long way away. And then MEO, which is our orbit, where our satellites are going today, is medium Earth orbit, and that can be up to, oh, I think roughly about 20,000 kilometers above Earth. Ours are going to 8,000 kilometers. And some of the other satellites in that orbit are the positioning systems like Galileo and GPS, GLONASS, which is the Russian positioning system. Some obs observation satellites. We do have some science missions in that orbit as well. And it's very useful because it means that for the O3B satellites, it can reduce the latency. Now, when the O3B teams decided they wanted to connect billions of people with high-speed internet from space, they needed an expert industrial partner, and they found it in Telesselenia Space, who have built all the satellites right from the beginning. Indeed, the men and women at Telesselenia Space, as I have said, are very experienced at building constellations. They are world leaders in the field, and they've been developing very very advanced technology. Indeed, this is a real effort of teamwork. We always say that in space it's about teamwork, but it really is because these industrial consortia are made of many, many different industries, all contributing down to the tiniest and most vital screw. So, Thalassolenia Space drew on their expertise to create innovative technology for O3B. The O3B journey started back in 2013, paving the way for broadband constellations. It's only now, nine years later, that we fully realize what a decisive moment the O3B constellation journey represented for the whole satellite industry. No one could imagine at that time that this project would be such a precursor in the broadband market. Thales Anya Space is so proud of being part of the O3B exciting project from the very beginning. The launch of this fifth batch will augment the constellation and these four new satellites will provide even more capacity, flexibility, and reliability to our freebies customers. At Thales Alenia Space, we are delighted of our outstanding partnership with our freebie teams, and we value the special relationship we have developed over the years. This resulted in a high-performance satellite constellation offering communications and the internet connectivity services at a fiber-like speed across the globe. I am convinced that this joint amazing journey will continue in the future. Today is important for all of us, and most of all for SES networks, who are continually expanding their business. My congratulations to all my teams for their enthusiasm and great job during these years, and my warmest thanks to SES for their continuous confidence in Thales Alenia Space. We're being tracked at the moment by the Malindi tracking station on the east coast of Africa. And after today, Ariane Space will have launched 159 satellites built by Thales Alenia Space just under half of those for constellations. 
And there are seven more in the order book, so that means there are seven more Telesilenia space satellites to be launched with Ariane Space. So, yes, I was just saying, Melindi, on the east coast of Africa, so our flight path's taking us out now towards Southeast Asia, so we should have been heading out across the Indian Ocean now. And it's going to take us over some very beautiful islands, the Seychelles and the Maldives, and down across Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, out across the South Pacific, and then back towards the northwest coast of South America. We will have done a lap. O3B really is a truly pioneering project. They've broken the mold. They've broken the mold in many ways, and he was just telling us that all the systems on board are functioning normally, so that's good to hear. Just to top right-hand side of your screen, you can see we're really climbing into space now. Look at our altitude going up. We've travelled 10, well, nearly 11,000 kilometres across the planet if we were travelling on, uh, as the crow flies, on Earth. All right, I'm going to turn her down so you guys can hear me. So, yeah, I did it. I just barely had enough hydrogen. And this whole thing around my head is the most common molecule in kerosene. I... These look different than like these, uh, some also in color and size. This is just a more flexible version for if I had strained bonds for carbon. Um, and these are space filling and I don't honestly know if I have enough space filling. Plus they take extra time for me to put on. So yeah, you, you, you get the idea. Um, I have found bits that my dogs have chewed. When I say that so I'm, really I'm a little embarrassed by that, so I'm going to turn her back up, and I'm going to try to clean up my mess. I had barely just enough hydrogens to do this. Getting closer now to our scheduled ballistic phase. Coasting without the engine again. That's in about a minute's time. Ballistics is interesting. It's the science of mechanics that deals with the launching flight behavior and effects of projectiles. So a ballistic missile is a missile guided only during the brief initial powered phase of the flight. And that's what's happened here. We've, we've used power and then we've been able to switch the engine off because we're using... We're onto our orbit, and after the missile has switched its uh, engine off, the trajectory is governed by the laws of classical mechanics, otherwise known as Newtonian mechanics. Because it was Newton who discovered them. And I believe, I'm not a scientist, but I believe that when we talk about the ballistic phase, we're talking about Newton's first law. And that says that if there's no external force, so if there's no pushing or gravity or any sort of power, then things that are stopped will stay stopped and things that are moving will stay moving. And that's what happens despite switching off the engine. We keep moving. It's clever stuff, eh? really climbing into space now we've uh, climbing to uh, an altitude of 363 kilometers and this was 33 minutes ago lifting off from the pad saw the swing arms push away if you look at the top right hand side you can see we did a bit of a what we call a roller coaster so we lifted off we increased our altitude, we climbed into the sky, then we plateaued out a bit, and now we're really, really climbing higher. What actually happened was we uh, ended up flying a little bit closer to Earth, which is why we dropped our altitude, in order to get onto the correct orbit. 
and we'll see later how that works because we are on an elliptical orbit at the moment. That's an orbit the shape of an egg. I have mixed feelings about chemistry. I think it's cool, but I don't think I really started to appreciate it until after I was done with the lectures and classes and stuff. So we're going to take a break now because we're in the ballistic phase. That's going to last uh, for about an hour, uh, just over an hour. Um, and uh, we will be coming back to you in just over an hour to uh, pick up our show. And we shall see you back here. <sighs> okay. So I'm going to mute her. And I'm going to switch... So look at the look at the resting doggies. Aren't they nice? Aren't they cute? They are very cute. Now I'm like, okay, I destroyed some of my other molecules and now I have to put them back together. Um, so as she said, there's going to be an hour break. So they're going to come back in an hour. Um, which for me is about 2.30. And at 3.30 is the static fire test. And we still have Hayabusa launching things at things today. So, yeah, it's, it's a very, very busy day. Um, so, also, I should tell you, for bingo, it, it does actually count if I say it. So, I know I have said max Q. And I know I have said RP1. So yeah, any of you that were waiting for bingo, because I know that uh, that that some of you are like literally just a box or two away from bingo, fill it out. Hold on, I hear I hear favorite human. What's up, favorite human? Are you going to sneak out? I'm almost done. Can you wait? I'm literally almost done. I'm going to do station identification. <laughs> Alright, so I should be back in about an hour, probably sooner. Um, I see somebody that said payload separation. Oh, man. Oh, wait, somebody said they bingoed. I can't read very well. J. Ramsey want, got a bingo. Congratulations. Somebody else said Michael T. Meyer says I had to take A-level chemistry because I wasn't allowed to do physics, math, and French. It actually proved very interesting in ret retrospect. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I appreciated chemistry till I was fully out of it. I think it, it which is weird because at one point I was a chemistry major because I thought I'd get out faster if I stayed with chemistry rather than just completing biology. Um, yeah, no. Also, don't try to be a computer science major. Double majoring with chemistry. Just don't, don't, don't do it. There, no, don't, don't do it. There's not a whole lot in common with the curricula, and you will spend a whole lot of time and money, and I believe the term academic suicide was mentioned. I'm not joking. Anyway, so station identification stuff before we, you know, do the whole awkwardly roll the credits thing, which I should probably get that ready now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, we normally stream uh, Sunday through Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern. That is 1,700 hours uh, there we go. 1700 hours UTC time. Um, we are literally, I got mix, missed up. All right. So Sunday through Friday, 1700 hours UTC. Sunday, I colorize space telescope data. Monday through Fridays, you get your astronomy and space news roundup. Hooray. Oof. Okay. So we are a part of PSI, which is a nonprofit corporation, so any donations that you do make are tax deductible. Speaking of PSI, we work in collaboration with Youngstown State University here in, uh, it's still cloudy, why, why, why is it still cloudy, Youngstown, Ohio? Um, donations, speaking of which, you see this beautiful bar at the bottom of the screen, which if you watched Daily Space earlier today, Pamela explained what that's for. That's to feed me. So, yeah. I I am here because of you guys, and y'all are awesome. 
uh, all of your donations, bits, merch, they all go towards that. Uh, bits and merch purchases don't sync as fast as donations do. We have to manually sync those. Um, but yeah, your, your donations really, you know, they pay me. So yeah, we are brought to you by you. So thank you for that. Um... I know there's more. There's always more. There's always more. But yeah, today is super busy. I'll be back in about 45 minutes to an hour and we'll finish this up and then we'll probably roll right into the test fire and yeah, things and stuff. And maybe my dogs will be a little more active. <laughs> As Star Strider says, please feed Annie. Yes, please feed Annie. So Annie can feed the dogs. So Annie can feed favorite human. Who has saltered off somewhere. Um, but yeah, I think that's all. Um, I still don't have the credits up. Where are the credits? There are the credits. Oof, oof, oof. Okay, so I'm going to awkwardly roll the credits and then we're probably going to raid somebody. I don't know who's active right now. So if you have a suggestion, toss the suggestion. I'm going to check the Knowledge Fellowship. Oh, Bother's streaming. Well, we're going to raid Oh Bother. I didn't even see if there were any other suggestions. So yeah, we'll be back in 45 minutes to an hour. The first 15 minutes of that is probably just going to be us chilling out and you guys watching the dogs because the dogs are being awesome right now. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Have some Cheerios for being awesome. All right. So I will see you guys in a bit. Bye. Where are the credits?